Welcome once again to Fort Knox. I am John Fort here this time with Ariel Cohen, the CEO uh, of and co-founder of Trip Actions. Is it co-founder or founder? Uh, co-founder. Co-founder. I have I the, I there was my, yeah, yeah, people yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, this is about travel, business travel, um, startup, COVID. Uh, you had some funding recently. There's a lot uh, to cover, but I'm going to start off the way I always do and ask you about the toughest problem that you're facing right now. What is it? Yeah, first of all, really thank you for having me, John. It's uh, it's fun to actually talk talk with you and have a deep discussion about a lot of different things, trip actions and uh, and others. Uh, but the toughest problem today, I think there are two. For, first of all, all of the travel companies now need to scale back, right? And scaling back uh, after eighteen months of uh, of pretty much depression in this industry uh, creates a lot of challenges. When you uh, say scale back, you mean scale back up, right? scale back up, right? Uh, you need to hire uh, for us, it's agents, but it's actually across the board. Uh, and you can see it, you know, if you'll visit an airport right now, you'll see that it's pretty packed with people, but you still need to uh, bring back the employees. Uh, and that's definitely a challenge of, I think, every travel uh, company right now. Uh, we have as a tech company some advantages there because it's not linear for us. We don't need to, you know, to bring in uh, people as fast as we grow, but we are growing extremely fast. Last week we grew at fourteen percent week over week. So think what does what does it mean? Now why? And, why? Because I mean, hasn't the world been uh, on lockdown and travel's been you know? I mean, it's it's come back a bit, but it's been kind of depressed. Why are you why are you growing so fast? <clears throat> There are two factors. First of all, travel all over the world is coming back. Um, you don't have what you don't have right now, and that's the other problem. I think that policymakers are, it takes them time uh, to open up the borders. It takes them time to create clarity of what do you need to do when you're traveling. So that kind of creates a, a, some delays in getting back to travel. But what we see very clearly with our customers, when something is opened, Think about San Francisco to New York, right? Domestic travel in the U.S., domestic travel in Europe. People are traveling. People are traveling on, a, I'm talking about business travelers, on pre-pandemic levels. A, what slows down travel is definitely, you know, today if you're in Europe and you don't have a U.S. passport, you cannot fly to the U.S., right? You have other, uh, <clears throat> we are working with some uh, uh, colleagues in India, very, very hard, right, to actually meet them. So you need to find some solutions if you need to meet, such such as meeting in Dubai, right, stuff like that. So you need to hustle a lot. That's definitely slows down uh, travel. But to your question, we see travel back. And there is another thing, and that's unique for trip actions. We grew our uh, customers base by more than, uh, we more than doubled it during COVID. I can explain later why. So we obviously see different level of growth rate than probably other people in the industry. How's it different though? Um, I keep hearing that people aren't going to travel for the same sorts of things that they might've traveled for before because, hey, they can just do it over Zoom and it's so productive. But I also hear people are tired of Zoom. Uh, and I also hear that in-person meetings are that much more special now. I've got you know people saying, oh, I so look forward to seeing you. And when we see each other face to face, it has all this meaning. So are you seeing the length of travel change? Are you seeing the frequency change? Um, is it too soon to, to say how this is going to affect business travel overall? Yeah, we, we had several bets during COVID, COVID. One of them was that in a post-COVID environment, Teams travel, team, teams that are traveling to meet, to spend time together, to plan would be very important. And we actually see it happening right now. Now, travel today, the complexity around it, business travel specifically, is different and way more complicated. If you think about what people care about today, uh, they care about cost, like always. That was always a thing. But now they care about sustainability, the environment. So they want to know how much they spend, how much carbon they spend, what are the, their alternatives. They care a lot about safety. Is it safe right now to fly to this uh, location from a COVID perspective? Um, and of course, there are all of the usual stuff around travel, right? You'll connect, you know, everything that you can think of as a road warrior. So travel by definition became more complex. And it's almost, by the way, that's the reason that we are going Today, you need a system. It's very hard to call an agent 
uh, or to exchange some emails with an agent and to get all of this information plus your entire trip and to figure out what to do. So it is more complex, but the need, and that's maybe what you are touching and the need of meeting face to face, the engagement, uh, really feel each other. You know, for 18 months, uh, a lot of employees, a lot of co-workers, people that joined companies and never met uh, their co-workers, uh, they didn't achieve the trust level that you need to achieve in, a, you know, when you work together. So yeah, you and I are talking right now through a video conferencing and it's fine and we'll have a good discussion, but to really know each other, it includes being in the room together. It includes maybe going to dinner afterwards and have a glass of wine. And that's, I think, what people are seeking to do right now. So let's talk more about what trip actions is, because some people would say, oh, Concur solved this problem you know, years ago. It's, it's software, it's SaaS, didn't SAP buy it? It wasn't that fine. Why is it not fine? Yeah, you know, I'm coming to the travel industry, me and my co-founder, Elon Twig. Uh, we didn't know anything about the travel industry six and a half years ago, really anything. We were completely ignorant that today when I'm thinking about it, it's actually embarrassing. And but there is one thing that we knew. Uh, we are travelers. We've used Concare. We use travel agencies such as the American Express, Carlson, BCD, all of the big, really big, you know, travel agencies that are out there. And as a road warrior, you are not getting the level of service that you need uh, from the tool. Right? You are trying to book something. You are trying to figure out what is the price, what is the best. Why don't I? Why can't I find the various hotels that I can actually find online? The various classes, the prices. Uh, so you end up calling an agent, and then you're doing a lot of back and forth with the agent. Sometimes you'll have an EA uh, that does it for you, but it's very, it's it's clunky. And that was, you know, we knew it as travelers, right? I didn't know anything about travel, travel, but we knew it as traveler, travelers. There is the other side, as in. A exec in a company as a manager, sometimes the CFO will show up in a meeting uh, with an Excel. We call it the Excel of shame. And <laughs> the, C the CFO will tell you, hey, your team is traveling a lot. They are spending a lot of money. But as a manager, you don't know what to do with that because you're not getting the tools to give you online visibility, real time, right now, what's going on? What are the tools to encourage my team to use the money to travel correctly? And we saw that as an opportunity. And we've created an online system, very much mobile focused, very much focused on the actual traveler and other users, the CFO. What, what, what does travel correctly mean? So think about it. Like, should I make this trip? Should I make this trip? And should I fly on business class or coach? So you'd think maybe, you know, uh, the kind of, I think, the antiquated way to think about it execs are flying business class, the rest of the employees are, uh, are flying coach. But I think that the right way to think about it is if I'm a road warrior and I'm traveling a lot every month, right? And this will impact my health. This will impact my satisfaction as an employee, right? Maybe I should get kind of an upgrade for my organization to fly premium economy, to fly a uh, business class. Uh, so it's not just based on like who you are in the organization. For me, that's flying correctly. For me, that's to realize uh, what are the right choices and to provide the tools for your employees to make the right choices when they're traveling. It's to even realize, should you make this trip or not? I've mentioned team travels earlier. This is a trip actions uh, solution. So you want to decide where your offsite is. Where are you meeting with people? If you care about the environment, you will do the offsite in the place that has proximity to most of the employees in the team. Right. And that's something that Trip Actions uh, uh, Team Travel is doing. It's really recommending the most optimized place for you to make this offsite cost wise, sustainability, safety. So, this is what I mean that it's so, so different than the solutions that are out there or were out there, you know, uh, pre COVID. And where does AI come in? So, you know, when you move things to online, you need to think about the individuals, right? You need to think about, you know, I'm sure that you have hotels that you like to stay at. I'm sure that you have airlines that you're using, time of the days that you're flying. And you have to align the search to that. So when I'm searching something at trip actions, I will see different flights and different choices than the flights that you will see. Uh, different hotels. I, for example, I like boutique hotels that are people that really like the big 
chain hotels, right? Uh, there are people that are responding more to mileage and points, people that are uh, responding more to um, to other things, like what is the coffee, you know, what kind of coffee do you get in the hotel in the morning? So as someone that likes boutique hotels, that's what our search will show me. Uh, as someone that likes uh, big chain hotels, that's what our search will show them. And this is pretty much a, a machine learning. Uh, and we use it a lot, mainly around the search in trip actions. Okay, so we've um, we've learned a bit about uh, trip actions. We'll get back to that later. Uh, I want to get into you personally, learn some more about you. So let's uh, let's start at the beginning. Uh, where were you born? Tell me about um, parents, household, siblings. Oh yeah. Uh, so I was actually born in Israel. You probably can figure it out from uh, my accent. Uh, came to the U.S. Uh, 12 years ago. Uh, I was born in Jerusalem, but de but then we were actually we used to live in a fairly small town. Uh, but a lot of what I am as a as a morph as an entrepreneur uh, came from my father, which actually unfortunately. It went under twice, right? So actually built a business and the business was not successful. And then, you know, and as a, as a teenager, as a kid, you need to kind of deal with this as a, as a family. And uh, and obviously it what, stopped. Uh, it, what kind of a business was it? It's completely, it's like as far as you can think, as uh, it, it, different as you can think of uh, from tech. Uh, one was actually a pretty big uh, meat shop, supermarket, stuff like that. People will come. And right, so very much like you need to feel the stuff. Uh, I used to walk there a lot, so a lot of how I'm kind of thinking about uh, about uh, you know thinking about your customer, right? Something you've mentioned, machine learning. What you get in a store is that you can actually see your customer. They walk in, you can see if they are smiling or not. You can see where are they going. Uh, something that we you kind of lose when it's online. So how do you recreate it? How do you know if uh, the customers are happy or not? So walking in this place actually, in a lot of ways, made me think about the user, the customer, uh, and so on. The other business was much, uh, much more in the advertisement kind of world, but uh, you can think about it as a non-scale Yelp. Really, you know, really, pretty much uh, again different times, and both businesses were successful and then failed. Uh, you know, recession came, different, uh, different things. Both businesses failed. And you can, you know, as uh, being a teenager, you know, something that, something that uh, some people know this about me, I completely skipped school, like high school, uh, middle school. And it's because we've dealt with this thing. So doing other stuff at that age kind of, I think, build, can build you really well as an entrepreneur uh, when you need to fight with other things later in your life. So uh, tell me why the business has failed. Was it... Um kind of external shocks, you mentioned recession and kind of having to do the business, build the business on a shoestring, not having capital built up to, to get through those times. Uh, tell, tell me about what the circumstances were and, and what you learned from that. You're actually touching really important point. A capital today is much more valuable for people that are trying to build a scaled businesses. Uh, back then for small businesses, you know, it was small businesses and you could see it through COVID, you know, how small businesses are suffering. When you don't have access to this capital, eventually it's whatever the line of credit that the bank will give you. And banks usually when uh, there is recessions uh, are responding by shutting down the, the, the credit lines, which on a small business, it can impact it very, very badly and, uh, and very fast. And, you know, sometimes, you know, in my business, there is a pretty big separation between me as a CEO and the company. But in small businesses, you will a lot of time find yourself, uh, you know, signing with the, you know, with the bank that you are actually uh, owning the debt. Right. So even though there is a separation, when things fall, uh, fall apart, you are owning it like you need to, you know, to bring the money back. And uh, and that's, I think, uh, the dynamics of small businesses. I remember that at the beginning of COVID, something that, again, our business is not small, but more as an individual kind of experiencing it. I was very worried about that because I thought that a lot of people, uh, you know, will get poor by, uh, and that's really what happened to us as, you know, for me, to me as a kid. And, uh, and it's scary, right? Small businesses does not have the same levers I think as uh, as bigger businesses. 
So do you have siblings? Yeah, I have uh, my sister. She actually lives in New York. Uh, and she also moved from Israel to, to here. Um, so tell me what the impact was on you. I think you said you were a teenager at the time, but you know, this is a place you, you worked at these businesses, you kind of got and were getting an education uh, through the businesses also. And now your family's going through this hard time. It's a small business that affects everyone. What was the impact on you? I actually start with a good thing and I needed to reflect on this years afterwards. I didn't really re realize it back then. Uh, but, you know, I think that uh, me and usually people that I'm uh, hiring are, uh, are tough. They're resilient, right? They can uh, deal with uh, with adversity. They can deal with crises. If you look at uh, our team at Trip Actions, uh, the E staff, most of them stayed throughout COVID. And why would you stay? And trust me, there, these are people that can find other, other places to work, right? Why would you stay uh, throughout a pandemic? It's if you are resilient, you want to prove something, you want to go through that. So that's something that that time actually definitely installed in me. And years afterwards, right, uh, I thought that that was actually, that gave me a huge advantage. Um, back then it was tough, you know, you are a kid, you... You know, there you compare yourself to other kids. Uh, definitely, times were tough, and uh, and you needed to deal with that, right? It affects a lot of you know. It affects your confidence. It affects your uh, ability to to concentrate, and therefore going or not going to school. So it was def definitely tough. Uh, but it's something that you know we as a family dealt with, and uh, we kind of survived it. And uh, and uh, today, again, looking back, I'm actually proud of it. Uh, obviously, back then as a teenager, you know, it was different. Yeah, and it, it sounds like you, for some period of time, were literally not going to school. Uh, what what was going through your head? What were you doing instead? Yeah, I was, uh, f first of all, it's different times. I think that it's different times in Israel is way less, uh, I would say, official or structured uh, place. So I don't think you could you could have done it in the U.S. Uh, but I've just kept it. Me and my friend, my best friend, we've discovered this concept of a, kind of at seventh grade, this concept of just not showing up. And uh, and and uh, we didn't show up, right? And nothing happened. And we continued to not show up. Uh, we'd come to do the exams and we don't think about it as, as like some uh, geniuses that were really good on doing that. We'd get some lame grades and kind of survived, you know, uh, uh, through school. And uh, it was, uh, there was something actually fun about it. The crazy thing is uh, I'm a CEO. This guy, uh, the, my best friend is a CFO of a company. So uh, both of us didn't join, didn't come to school a lot. So maybe, I don't know, <laughs> maybe there is something there. When did things change for you? Uh, whether it was um, a focus on something else that was more interesting to you than school, where you grew and, and got uh, intellectually engaged? or what, Was it high school? Was it college? It's funny. I'm like, it's a, you're probably touching something that's very much my personality. For me to do something, I need to be very much engaged, interested in this thing. And, and that's kind of how I'm thinking about stuff. Um, and for me, a lot of this was actually on the business world. I've, uh, uh, I got very intrigued by everything economics, uh, everything game theory, uh, everything statistics, by the way. And, um, and uh, while I didn't go to, really, I didn't go to school and I was actually pretty bad at mathematics uh, when I was uh, at school. Uh, today, I'm actually pretty good at that, which is strange because uh, you look at my grades at school, you'll not believe it that it's, you know, that today I can be pretty good at statistics and stuff like that. Did you just and need like a, a word problem, a business problem that was worth I solving? need a problem. I need a problem. If I see a problem ahead of, in front of me, I would go all in and, uh, and try to figure it out. Uh, so it's, you know, people are uh, uh, learning things differently. And but I see it with my daughter today. She's 14 years old, super, super smart. Um, you know, a lot of times with girls, right, they will have less confident confidence around uh, stuff like mathematics. And I think it's a lot of stuff, a lot of things around how they're being kind of uh, uh, how how uh, the system is working and socialized yeah. and so on. And I'm always telling her, and I think she will be a CEO like all of her qualities. And I'm always telling her, hey, listen. 
if you'll think about it differently and you'll really try to figure out a real problem, uh, I think you, because I see the similarities between us, uh, I think you'll do great. And that when she takes it and when she has the confidence uh, to do that, she's doing great. Uh, so I think uh, it's that, like the people are, are uh, learning diff in different ways. And sometimes schools are teaching you in, in kind of one way. And it doesn't mean like, and that's something that I've discovered, it doesn't mean anything like uh, about your future uh, uh, based on, you know, your current academic skills and so yeah. on. So people are just learning in different ways. So what was the first business problem that you can remember that really yeah. intrigued you? So the, it's funny. The one thing that I did go to high school and actually was very engaged uh, was we participated in Israel in this competition between schools on uh, building these businesses, running a, basically a factory and uh, making a lot of decisions. And eventually there was a share price uh, based on your uh, decision. And I was engaged. I would walk like it was a... Uh, uh, group learning, but I think I was like, I don't know, 24 by 7 thinking about this thing. Uh, and we took uh, kind of number one in Israel. And uh, wow. But that was because uh, that's something that really intrigued me. That's something that I really uh, liked. And in a lot of ways, I have the exact same behavior in, uh, you know, in trip actions. When we, when we needed, you know, in March 2020, uh, when we needed to really, really, really react and fast. Like we lost all of our revenue in one night. Like really all of our revenue. Like we dropped to zero in one night, which you see me smiling right now. It was not fun at all back then. Um, and to then figure it out, for me, I saw it as uh, almost like, uh, okay, let's figure it out. Let's think what we need to do to actually come out of it as a business. As, and uh, and. Again, obviously, you see me smiling right now, but back then it was definitely uh, something that we needed to address. Well, let, let me build up to that and uh, try to understand uh, first what brought you to the U.S. Because a couple, you know, companies got founded after that, so that seems like a, a good place to jump to. I think the U.S., you know, I know that there is a lot of uh, criticism sometimes about the U.S. and opportunity here. I still think that the U.S. is a pretty a good place uh, to get good opportunity, definitely for entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, there is a way to raise money here. There is a way to think about ideas. Uh, it's also, it is also a big market, right? Uh, a lot of startups are being born in Israel, but Israel is a small market. Here it's a big market. You can see the customers. You can meet with them. You can drive down the street here. In a, a, we live in Palo Alto and with, with, the, with the potential customers, right? Potential investors and so on. So I think the opportunity here is pretty big. Um, and back then I was working for HP. HP acquired a company that I was part of, and they gave me an opportunity to move to the US to lead a pretty big products uh, team. I did the product management for a team, and it was a great opportunity. And, uh, and, uh, and from that, you know, I created the, with Elon, the same co-founder, which is also, you know, he came from Israel, two startups. Um, probably we could have done something in Israel, right? There is an ability to start startups in Israel, but probably not to the sizes and to the level of success that we've done, uh, that we uh, were achieving here. So definitely, you know, I'm, I'm actually very thankful to, you know, to being here and getting this kind of opportunity. So talk to me about that decision to move, though, because if I'm calculating correctly, I think you said you have a 14-year-old. Um, you had a young yeah. family at the time, right? Uh, so that's kind of like a major life decision. It's not It's not a whim. Uh, what were those conversations like? Yeah, first of all, we had twins. So uh, it's a boy and a girl. I also have a little one, eight, which was born here, but they were born in Israel. And when we moved, they were like uh, one years old. And with twins... <laughs> you know, it's tough. You, you need all of the help that you can get. And obviously our family is in Israel. Uh, and the discussion was very much about the opportunity. Like if we move here and we, we have this opportunity, uh, what we'll achieve. Uh, you know, it's a tough discussion also, uh, you know, in my case with my wife, right? She, you know, I was getting the job opportunity. She needed to, uh, she, she was actually, she had a, a license for a consulting a kids. A, it's kind of a psychology license. And when you move, you need to 
uh, do everything from scratch. Uh, so it's tough, right? You lose your career in one night. And, uh, and she supported me, right? She supported us, uh, you know, coming, uh, coming to the U.S., kind of losing her job, her career, rebuilding it. And uh, that's the tough part. Uh, obviously, well, moving... Yeah, that's major. I mean, let, let's park there for a moment because it speaks to a lot of the dynamics within COVID that a lot of CEOs and others are dealing with. When, um, when there's a, a major change, sometimes it falls to one partner versus the other to, to shoulder the difficulty of that. So it sounds like not only do you have uh, twins, which are a lot of work I hear, I don't know, I never had twins, but you know, <laughs> two, two babies at once, you know, they, they wake each other up, all that stuff. And, you know, coming out of that, once they are more capable, she's got to rebuild a career and probably rebuild a network of, of friends and all that, that, you know, if you're in business school or, or you know, in school, you're kind of getting that baked in. That must've been tough. Yeah, first of all, my wife, she is uh, very strong. Uh, she is resilient. And uh, so she could deal with that. Uh, but it's tough. And you've mentioned COVID. I remember that uh, when COVID started, I, I think, you know, a lot of companies made a lot of progress around diversity and specifically about women in, uh, at work. And it's something that like at Trip Actions, I was very, very proud of it, right? Uh, half of my staff are uh, women and also across the company, the diversity is pretty good. And when COVID started, I knew and I, I've to I was talking with a lot of people about it, that it will take us years back around diversity. And the reason is that uh, whether it's politically correct or not, who do you think will, you know, will carry the burden, right? And, uh, and, uh, and that's an issue. And, uh, and, and I thought about my wife, about like, uh, and how she needed to deal with that. But you need to be strong. You need to really be strong and actually not just jump into your kind of your, the role that you were given. And, uh, and, uh, but it's tough. I think it's definitely tough. So tell me about becoming uh, an entrepreneur then uh, after that experience, coming to uh, work for someone else, you end up um, at Jive Software and then from there? Yeah. So, you know, moving for, to Jive from HP was my kind of first step into uh, into the startup world, into, into, into actually knowing the people and knowing the dynamics of what does it mean to, to do a startup. And our first startup was really small, right? We, we looked at a problem while we were working at Jive and we thought, wow, if we can solve this problem, a lot of cloud companies such as Jive, Box, uh, uh, Salesforce will need our software, right? So it was kind of, we saw a problem almost like as uh, engineers and, and we didn't think about the market, right? We started to develop this thing and we realized that maybe the problem is there and maybe we have a really cool technology, but the market is not really there. And uh, don't... explain. So what was what was the problem and where's the disconnect between a, a problem that people have versus a market that's really uh, addressable? Yeah. So today with the Slack, you will totally understand the problem. Back then it was hard to understand. Uh, we knew how to connect enterprise systems to social uh, streams such as Slack, right? So, uh, but back then you didn't have Slack. So there were Jive, there was Yammer and so on. And the idea was you start your email, like let's say that you're emailing all day long, but some of the team is uh, actually using a system like Yammer or Jive, how are they gonna collaborate? If someone is storing a document at uh, G Drive and the other at Dropbox and the third one at SharePoint, how do you collaborate? I think you get that problem today because cloud software is, uh, is available for everybody. Back then, cloud was at the beginning. So to jump on that problem when cloud, the cloud software didn't happen yet was kind of way, way, way too early. And, uh, and we had this mechanism that was connecting all of these systems. Uh, but I think that not a lot of people needed it. And uh, and uh, and luckily, and I think that's kind of part of my experience or my childhood, which I've mentioned earlier. Luckily, we realized very quickly if we are trying to continue to fight and doing it by ourselves, it will it will end badly. So so we decided to partner with companies and sell it, and we sold the uh, Stream Once. That's the company's name to Jive uh, after nine months. So really really fast. 
uh, which was good because it gave a uh, you know good return for our investors we made some money out of it uh, uh, under jive there was it was a feature under jive there was something to do with that but a lot of this was maybe the instincts that I got as a, as a kid to know when you know when when you need to actually change your uh, business direction and do something else and so then um, trip actions when out of that first experience where it was sort of like a toe in the water, um, a success, a modest success, what what gives you uh, the confidence, the spark, the idea that, okay, now it's time to do this bigger play? So Elon and I, we both looked at Stream Once as a failure. I know that that's not how people looked at this, but that's how we looked at this. And it was a failure to build a real company, right? I think that when you're going and starting a business, you're trying to build something. You're not trying just to make some money. You're trying to build something that solves a, a problem for a lot of people. And we didn't do that. We had two customers. We had seven employees. Uh, it was very small. And in the two years that we were part of Jive after the acquisition, we spent a lot of time uh, thinking uh, not about the problem, but what kind of company, what kind of culture, what do we want to create? Uh, it was a lot of discussions between us about that. The idea came way later, uh, but the discussion of what we want to create. And we knew that we want to create a company that will last for, uh, for several generations and will employ a lot of people and will make a difference. And that was the angle. That was how we looked at this. And we needed almost to fail with Stream Once to actually uh, think about how do you build a business and to land on trip actions. And Trip Actions was one of many ideas that we had. Uh, we like the idea that there is a big business that has an obvious need for disruption. And we also like the idea that we were familiar with it as, as travelers, as, as road warriors, as managers. So all of the things got kind of uh, together, but we really needed to reflect a lot of what do we want to create. And even today, why, you know. When, why, when, why didn't you break up? Right. Like if it, there was this if there was this failure, why didn't you conclude, oh, maybe this partnership is the problem? No, we you, we Elon and I are very different people. We are complementing each other. We are friends, but we are uh, looking at problems uh, uh, through completely different uh, perspectives. And uh, and we also like each other, so we knew that uh, that uh, it will work. We interestingly enough, we did ask that question: Do we want to create another startup together? Right? And for both of us, the answer was yes. It just works uh, well. We know each other for years, like more than twenty years, even before the startups. So so that was a uh, kind of almost like an easy decision to do it together. And so, what made this experience different besides the idea not being too early but what what made it different was it something that you learned from the first experience it was really going on a big market with real problem being very honest with yourself that there is a problem there go and validate it i knew uh, <clears throat> i remember that i was talking with one of our early investors with oren ziv early 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 and uh, I'm talking like four months into trip actions. And I told him, this is going to be huge. And I was comparing it to other companies that I will not name right now. But uh, I was telling him that will be bigger than these companies. And what was the reason? I started to talk with CFOs and told them, hey, this is what we are about to do. And I would finish the meeting and they will tell me, can we start to use it? And we didn't have it yet. Right. We, we just had an idea and some slides and we were writing code. And, and, but the reaction was bring it on. And I remember the journey was like that. We had customers that you would not believe we had, you know, SurveyMonkey is a pretty big organization. Uh, they started to use trip actions when we had 10 employees, which is completely insane. You know, you need support, you need other things. And, and I was, wow, it's like it's like companies are really moving to our solution and very, very early in our life cycle. So I think it was the need. Uh, you know, you've mentioned Conquer earlier. Uh, I've never met somebody that actually likes to use Conquer. And, and, and that's a fact, right? It's a legit software, right? Uh, I think that 70% of the market is using it. But 
if you if nobody like to use something eventually something somebody else will come and disrupt it and I think that that's why uh, we from the get-go knew that we are on to something yeah so I, I always ask about what I call Death Valley which is a uh, lowest point could be personal could be career-wise because um, I think there's a lot to learn and Yeah. There. Uh, you mentioned a couple of things that I suppose could be that from <laughs> kind of earlier in career and from just the past uh, year or two. But w- what would you say um, is an experience like that, uh, perhaps the lowest point that you've been through? Yeah, for, you know, sometimes these things are also on a personal and mental level. And when we were fairly small, 50 people company, so we are still very small and early. Um, we had a fight with one of our, uh, our uh, suppliers, one of our uh, partners, and a pretty big one, and we were very small, they were very big. And, uh, and that, that thing lasted for nine months. So it took a lot from me. All of, by the way, I'm not kidding, all of my white hair is from that time. And I'm not <laughs> kidding. You'll see a picture of me before that. You'll see, you know, you'll not see white hair. And then, you know, like in, uh, in nine months, I gained all of it. And so we really fought uh, our way as a very small company through that. Uh, on the same time, like five months into it, we what, also do it. What was the core issue? Yeah, I don't want to get to all of this issue because it, it's like uh, it will, uh, I don't want to create a new crisis, but think about uh, usually the type of uh, disputes between third parties like us that are selling uh, stuff of, uh, of others. Right? And you can see it a lot in retail, you can see it a lot of, uh, on online retail and so on. For us, it was a little bit of the ignorance that I was talking about at the beginning. We were very ignorant on travel, even the dynamics uh, of the travel industry. And we step on some landmines that in hindsight, if we knew, we wouldn't even step on it. There was no real business issue there. It was mo- mo- mostly us being ignorant. And stepping on this landline uh, landmines and and I think that we've learned the hard way right uh, you know what suppliers what partners uh, how do they think about uh, about you reselling their stuff what are their uh, requirements and we definitely learned it in the hard way now the interesting thing was that five months into this we were also raising money and And, uh, and that's the round that we've raised. It was our C round. We've raised it from uh, Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, ben Horowitz was joining our board. Uh, we became a unicorn. So think about all of the checkboxes, all of the dreams that when you start a, you're starting a startup, everything that you want to achieve is happening on the same time that we are having this fight. And I remember that I couldn't sleep at night. Because on one side I'm we are achieve we are making it right on the other side there is this thing that uh, basically can kill us and how do you reconcile between the two and I remember eventually we solved it but I remember that at the end of it uh, you know talking about mental and uh, mental health I was done I was like I couldn't uh, uh, I couldn't do anything I couldn't almost see people anymore and I remember wow. that the best thing that I did I actually went for a trip by myself to Japan uh, kind of isolated myself in the mountains there I'm not kidding uh, by myself really almost like a clinic you know clearing my mind uh, I was like think about it as some cleansing uh, thing and I came when I came back I was uh, completely different I think I gained back my strength and by the way I'm now doing it every year every year I'm going to Or one week somewhere nobody can contact me really clearing my head uh, but that was this time it was definitely you called it a death valley it was definitely a low point uh, on a personal I think and mental level uh, well on the outside you know we raised money and uh, and everybody were smiling around us I think I, you even interviewed me back then and I was probably smiling and all of this thing but in the inside I was definitely kind of shutting down yeah and I Let's spend a little bit more time there. How did you know that it was so serious that you couldn't just fight through it, this too shall pass, that you really needed to disconnect, 
get away for a period of time because hey that's a sacrifice even aside from work you got a personal life that continues right. to run and have needs so to completely separate that's like how did you come to the awareness of how serious it was first of all you know we've talked we've mentioned my wife earlier and she definitely saw it right obviously she was with me you know being an entrepreneur it's definitely impacting your family right your family is seeing you through everything, the ups and downs, when there is pressure, when you, right, everything. And I think that it was obvious for people around me that, you know, I need to do something. I need to clear my, because the pressure chamber was so, so tough. And I think my wife mentioned it, uh, some of my friends. And then we came up with this idea of, uh, you know, maybe I just need to disconnect. And uh, so it was really, you know, I think the people that surround you will usually, you know, help you uh, in this kind of uh, in this kind of times. What made it an annual thing? Um, because some people would say, I went away, I cleared my head, I got recalibrated, now I'm fine. I think it's really understanding how much it was good for me uh, to disconnect. I mean, like the, like I my cell phone, I, I could only make calls out of it, right? I deleted all of the apps, right? Uh, everything. And but really, I realized that that trip, that the, the disconnecting uh, really, I, I regained my energy. I regained my probably my sanity, right? And knowing that. Uh, then it's almost obvious to you that you need to do it every year. Even um, uh, in COVID, uh, November, you know, November 2020, I still found a place to go to and uh, went to Belize, actually. It was the, one of the only places that opened, uh, opened back then. And uh, I like to scuba dive. And uh, so went there and did a lot of scuba diving. And again, cleared my my head, right? And this is during COVID, obviously. <laughs> you know, I did need to clear my head uh, back then. Yeah, because uh, certainly um, you were going through it. I, I often find that whatever it is that gets you through that Death Valley experience becomes a tool in your toolbox that you continue to use. And I guess one literal way of looking at it is that the disconnect <laughs> right the the disconnecting and taking time to yourself is the tool but it, is there a, an overarching lesson um, that you apply not just to yourself but to business or advice that you give others that you got out of that experience I think f first of all you know you are responsible right you are responsible for the employees and for your customers and for your shareholders and you know there are a lot of promises that you are uh, giving to people, right? When you are uh, when you're building a business, when you are an entrepreneur, even to yourself, to your family. So eventually, you are responsible for that, and I think that's what creates the pressure. I think what creates the the ability to co-op with that, and that's specifically probably with me. I believe that there is always a way, no matter you know what will happen to you. There is only, always a way to fix it. And I think that if I'm looking at my team, uh, probably all of them are like that. Probably all of them are people that are resilient, that you can throw stuff at them and, uh, and, uh, and they, will, uh, you know, they will know what to do. And I think it's this belief that there is always a, always a way. Uh, I remember, you know, like recently when the Delta variant uh, started to pick up, uh, I was thinking to myself, okay, here we go again. Uh, but uh, but this time, uh, I felt that all of us, right, we now had more experience, right? We knew, right, uh, what to do. And, and, uh, and this is this thing, this core belief that you can deal with everything. Wow. Okay. So going back then to trip actions itself, and as you look ahead, what's the main factor for software for business travel for expense management all of that 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 goes into smart software for what's the key thing that's going to determine who's successful in this space over the next three to five years you think i think that companies and vendors that will focus on the end user experience creating something that uh, it will sound strange but magical moments you use the software and it's magical 
like uh, our, our trip actions liquid uh, you know you swipe a credit card and that's expense management you'll not do anything like uh, you know who was uh, with you at the dinner and what was the dinner's purpose and what was the location everything in policy out of policy uh, you just swipe the credit card and that's the last thing that somebody in the organization will do and deal with this, this expense it's magical it's like it's like it's almost like you cannot believe it and I think that companies that will do that uh, the, the 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 users the Uh, the we'll, we love it we'll uh, we love them we'll uh, we'll reward them with a lot of loyalty and uh, and uh, and I think there are several companies like this I I, uh, I think that we are one of them and that's definitely the focus in the company always 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 putting our users in the center and thinking what do we want to give them what do they need from us how do we make sure that they are enjoying our software? Well, in a tough space, but one that's coming back, um, that's, uh, I think, great advice and a great perspective on trip actions. And then you shared a lot from your personal story. I know I'm starting to do more business travel. Um, you know, I, I had, what, three trips last month. I'm getting ready to take another one uh, coming up. So that's, I guess that's a little, you know, qualitative good news, right? I think uh, what you've just said, the reason that you are doing that, that, you know, you are eventually in the people's business. And I'm sure that you want to engage people. That's what you do all day long, right? You do it in TV. But I'm sure that a lot of this is actually the ability to engage and be with people. That's exactly what it is. And uh, even though it's virtual, I'm glad. Uh, it's, it's real, but it's, it's digital. Right. It's distance. I'm glad that we got to engage uh, and I got to learn about trip actions and about you, Ariel Cohen. Thank you.